<laughs> and then what do you say? On, and then what you do? <laughs> Girl, I would have died! <laughs> No way! Stop it! Ah, oh my! I know! Yeah! What? Oh, I'm just making some milkshakes. <laughs> milkshake? Watch your show on any TV in your house with Iris, the new HD multi-room DVR from Rev TV. Start watching in one room and pick up right where you left off in another. Call to get Iris in your house today. Despite her leader's change of heart, the FNM deputy says she supports all constitutional amendment bills. A PLP MP slams the party's leadership. Ice cream lovers cool down on Miracle Treat Day. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Vonnie Tutend, and B12 starts now. Topping news tonight, despite opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis' apparent change of heart on the constitutional amendment bills, his deputy leader made it clear today she still fully supports those controversial bills. Loretta Butler-Turner also commented on mounting tension between PLP MPs, telling NB12 the PLP seems to be on the brink of an internal political war. Kyle Joaquin reports. Despite a heated back and forth yesterday between the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition, FNM Deputy Loretta Butler-Turner says she still supports the constitutional amendment bills 100 percent, and she says she doesn't fear that the referendum may be in jeopardy because of opposing views. FNM Leader Dr. Hubert Minnis shocked some members of Parliament and observers on Wednesday when he got into a heated exchange with Prime Minister Christie. He asserted that the government finds itself in a mess and is now trying to drag the opposition down with it. He also suggested that the second and third constitutional amendment bills can be dealt with through legislation. This despite urging all MPs to speak with one voice on the issue of gender equality just three weeks ago. When asked how she feels about Minnis' change of heart, the FNM deputy said she doesn't want to add fuel to the political firestorm. And so I just want to hold that point. I don't want to build on the contention. I don't want to build on anything that's going to be negative. Now the heated arguments in Parliament were not just between the two leaders but PLP MPs as well. Butler Turner said it's a clear sign that the party is gearing up for an internal political war. I support all of the bills 100 percent. I'm very comfortable with them. I think that um, in legislation uh, there's always room for perfection. I don't know if we'll ever reach that level of absolute perfection. Um, certainly we want to get as near to it as possible, but there will always be those persons that will be uncertain as to what could be the possible outcome. But we can't hold ourselves back because we can't predict what the future holds. Butler Turner encourages all parliamentarians to work together to ensure the bills are as close to perfection as possible, noting she still supports the controversial bills 100%. People are always um, a bit afraid of, of change. But if you just um, give up, then you'll never have any successes. It's very important. There will be challenges. Nobody said that this would be a walk in the park. And if, you're, if you have the conviction that this is the right thing to do, then we as leaders um, can't force it upon our people, but we've got to give them every opportunity to understand and to believe that the choices we're trying to help them make are the right choices. Prime Minister Christie and Minister with Responsibility for Elections Dr. Bernard Nottage recently said that if there isn't unanimity on the constitutional changes in Parliament, there would be no referendum on November 6th. Despite the dramatic turn of events in Parliament, Butler Turner said she doesn't think the process of constitutional reform is in jeopardy. The bottom line is this. The PLP is having internal wars that are of enormous dimensions. Uh, this what you're seeing publicly is just a manifestation of what they're going through internally. 
I think that this is probably a part of the reason why there seems to be almost this um, difficulty in effective leadership and also lack of focus on the national agenda. Butler Turner said if Leslie Miller can have a change of heart on the constitutional changes, then all hope is not lost. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Hours after he accused a fellow progressive Liberal Party MP of misleading the House, Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins raked the PLP over the coals last evening. While speaking on those bills in Parliament, Rollins asserted that MPs are politically destroyed for expressing independent views and suggested that the party's younger members were used as tokens in the last election, then cast aside. There are some with tremendous power in our country, political power, who would literally, excuse me, I retract, who would figuratively rip out your guts and cry at your political funeral. And that was just the beginning. Mere minutes into his contribution to the debate on constitutional amendment bills, Fort Charlotte NP Dr. Andre Rollins proceeded to slam the leadership of the PLP, asserting that members are made to suffer if their views differ from the government. When we stand to our feet and we speak in a fashion that appears to be contrary to that of the party line, there are those who give orders to politically destroy and do damage to that individual for no reason other than the fact that they espouse independent views. Rollins, who left the National Development Party to join the PLP in 2011, also suggested the PLP used young politicians as tokens to help the party win the 2012 general election. We were all as young, aspiring politicians given an opportunity to offer ourselves for elected office. We were told that we represent a new generation of politicians, people who would cross the bridge laid by the Right Honorable Member for Centerville and carry our people further into the promised land. However, Rollin says it appears that all major political parties figuratively and sometimes literally assault those who go contrary to party lines. His comments came before he announced that he does not support the fourth constitutional amendment bill, which seeks to end discrimination based on sex. Rollins blasted Central and South Luther MP Damien Gomez, who questioned if those concerned about Bill No. 4 harbor insecurities about their own sexuality. The fact is it was an unnecessary statement. It was most inane. It was most asinine. Rollins said the bill opens the door for challenges in favor of same-sex marriages, noting that unless the government reconsiders the bill, he cannot support it. He also said he is prepared to resign as party web. I fully expect that if this is taken to a vote as it is today, I can no longer and I am prepared to no longer serve as government whip. Because if the government expects that it has the unanimous support of of this side, this side being the government side, and I cannot accede to those wishes, I'm prepared to step aside. Meantime, Bamboo Town MP Renwood Wells says he can support bills one, two, and three, but he doesn't intend to support the fourth bill, insisting that if the government doesn't want the debate to center on same-sex marriage, it should make the necessary adjustments. Wells says he believes the proposed amendment to Article 26 of the Constitution, which seeks to end discrimination based on sex, could lead to challenges in favor of same-sex marriages. Mr. Speaker, I believe that it is truly our intent as a government to not have this debate become a debate about gay marriage. I say if that is the case, given the fears of the Bahamian people, given their suspicion of us, their lack of trust of their politicians, we should acquiesce and give them language for which will not cause them to think twice about supporting the rights of men and women in this country. 
Wells, who is the deputy government whip, also questioned whether the whip would be on for the vote on those bills. Mr. Speaker, in regards to bill number four, and really we ought to decide whether the whip is on in this circumstance because the member for Englestad said that the whip was not on and this is a matter of conscience. Others may have indicated that the whip is on. If the whip is on, well, I was the deputy whip. So if the whip is on, that means the two of us ought to be whipping. Debate will continue on Monday. More than two dozen women's rights advocates took to Parliament Square yesterday, calling on parliamentarians to do the right thing and support the constitutional amendment bills to advance gender equality. Dana Smith reports. As members of Parliament continue debate on the constitutional amendment bills in the House of Assembly, activists gathered outside in Parliament Square to demand equality between men and women and to call on MPs to do the right thing. We're not asking to be in control. We're not asking to take a man's job. Yeah. We're just asking for the same rights that they have. Yeah. Our voices will not be quiet. We will not be hushed until we have equality between women and men and this principle of non-discrimination reflected in our constitution. We have to know that this is a right for all of us and we all have to rise above any petty things, all the distractions. It is a huge issue that really we have to rise above everything all the distractions and we have to vote yes for equality. As more parliamentarians raise concerns over the constitutional amendment bills, activists are calling on elected officials to ensure this long-awaited referendum finally sees the light of day. Opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis made an abrupt turn on the issue yesterday despite his initial pledge to support the bills. Bahamas Crisis Center Director Dr. Sandra Dean Patterson said the referendum must not, once again, become a game of political football. I, I, I would challenge Dr. Minnis not to lose the momentum that he had when this bill was first mentioned two weeks ago. It's very important for opposition and um, government to come together and speak out in one voice. We cannot allow this to become a political football. That's what happened the last time and we're walking that same road and we cannot allow it. Minnis joined fellow FNM's Montague MP Richard Lightborn and St. Anne's MP Hubert Chipman in voicing concerns about the referendum. Bamboo Town's Renward Wells, Fort Charlotte MP Andre Rollins, Tall Pines MP Leslie Miller and Marco City MP Greg Moss have all also voiced concerns about the bills, with the latter questioning the Second Amendment, which would give a Bahamian woman the same rights as a Bahamian man to pass citizenship to her spouse. Dean Patterson said she's completely disappointed with the remarks from some of the country's leaders. I'm completely disappointed, you know, that in this day and age we would have leaders, and especially young men who represent us and are bring, come bringing a new generation up to say those, those kinds of negative things. I mean, all over the world, when uh, people move to follow jobs, to follow um, uh, education or whatever, you meet and you fall in love. You know, and, and women should have the right to bring their spouses home in the same way that men have the right to do. And it's unbelievable that they can't see that that's wrong, wrong. Local recording artist and activist Janil Burroughs called on parliamentarians to pass the bills, noting their support has already been pledged. The support was pledged by not just the prime minister, but as well as the leader of the opposition right out of the gate. And for any of them to come back and say, Either of their members of parliament did not have the opportunity over the past three weeks to get familiar with these bills, to dialogue with their constituents, to have meetings with members opposite is ludicrous. Both Burroughs and Dean Patterson believe the commentary amongst MPs and the general public shows there needs to be more education on the issue. Reporting for NB12, I'm Dana Smith.